sensor, the P2. Unlike its predecessor, the P1, the P2 sensor is matter enabled, which allows you to add this device into any ecosystem without the Akara app. Recently, I've been experimenting with the wasp in a box technique for using motion sensors to turn off and on lights. I'm able to do this automation really easy using Akara's app and their P1 sensor, but I couldn't really do this using the P2 because Akara doesn't have a matter enabled hub at the moment and the device isn't recognized by the app. So for the first time, I'm going to try using this wasp in a box technique in Apple's HomeKit environment since I was able to add the device there. I spent several hours trying to recreate this automation using Apple's own system, but I encountered failure after failure after failure. <laughs> And since the P2 is matter enabled, I tried to take advantage of that and port it into Home Assistant so I can automate it using Node Red, but that didn't work out either. This is now day three, and I'm gonna give Apple's automation ecosystem one final try. And hopefully this time it'll work out as well as Akara's version. For context, this is a quick rundown of how the Wasp in a Box technique works in Akara's app. First, the box needs to turn on the light whenever it detects motion. Next, the box should turn off the light whenever it stops detecting motion for a period of time. Third, the box should disable the automation that turns off the light whenever it detects movement while the wasp is trapped in the box. And lastly, the box should enable the ability to turn off the light whenever it's opened. For the HomeKit version, I'm going to recreate these four commands. Part one is turning the lights on whenever motion is detected. I'll also time box this automation between 8 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. Part two is where I historically ran into problems. I need a way to dynamically disable an automation whenever the system knows a wasp is trapped within the box, but HomeKit can't do that. It can't dynamically disable an automation. So I tried to get around this by creating an automation that would remember the state that it's in, but HomeKit doesn't support persistent variables, so I can't do that either. So I had to just MacGyver my way through this and just turn my Akara hub light into a state machine or a persistent state machine. So I'll read the light and determine whether or not what to do based off of the state of the light. I'll also time box this automation between 8 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. In part three, this is where we let the automation know that the box is open. All we need to do is just turn off the nightlight whenever the door is open. And then lastly here in part four, this is where we actually turn off the lights. So when the lights in the bathroom is on, we're gonna wait five minutes. And then if we detect that the night light is off, we're gonna turn off the bathroom light or the light in the quote unquote box. In the Akara app, I'm able to specify multiple triggers at once, but it doesn't look like I have that ability here within HomeKit, which means I'm gonna need a fifth automation. Now this fifth automation will be responsible to trigger that five minute countdown whenever the door opens and the bathroom light is on and the night light is off. Let's test this out. I'm currently in the guest bathroom. We'll, we'll see if this stays on. Uh, the five minute timer should have started. The light outside or the nightlight should have turned on. Um, you can see if it did or not on the screen. I haven't checked it yet, but um, hopefully everything is working. I don't know if it's gonna go all the way through. There are some issues with this already that I've seen. So um, I'll talk about that shortly afterwards. Okay, so it's been five minutes and the lights haven't shut off on me, so it's kind of working. Um, the motion sensor also didn't see me for the entire five minutes, so it stayed on, 
but the um, I guess the state of the light didn't persist like it's doing some weird stuff so it's not working exactly how I planned it but even though in the app it doesn't look like it's working the way I planned it in actuality like real life like the lights are behaving the way I expect at least in this situation so let's call it like a win with an asterisk I don't know. So let me give my thoughts about how the automation went and just my thoughts about the Akara P2. First, uh, the Car P2 is pretty awesome. Uh, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's anything like super beyond like the P1. Um, but it is, a, it feels a little bit bigger. It looks a little bit bigger. At least the packaging is a little bit bigger. And from the, sensor point of view the sensors seem to be more responsive it seems to be more accurate if i can use that accurate doesn't seem to feel like the right word but let's just use responsive it feels more responsive um and it feels more robust if that makes any sense um so so with that like Everything that I've experienced so far has not been the fault of the sensor itself. Um, what I'm dealing with is the fact that I can't put the sensor inside a car. Um, I reached out to Akara and they, they mentioned beforehand that, Hey, this is matter enabled. We don't currently support matter, but, uh, they're planning on it soon. So once that kind of happens, then I will let you guys know. Cause then I'll be able to test this the way I'll do like a round two and kind of test it the way that I want. Uh, but currently I think a lot of the issues that I've been having is due to home kit due to Apple system. Uh, it's just. It's just not, not to say that a car's app is more robust than the Apple automations. Um, it's just that to do like the, to kind of use a car sensors to the fullest, a car's app does that very well. And the Apple automations or the home kit automations, they're, it does things well across the board, but it can't be like the master of anything. Makes sense though, because you can't show favoritism towards one sensor or another. Um, so for that, I've noticed like really weird inconsistencies whenever I did try to do this whole wasp in a box technique within the bathroom. Um, my wife keeps tells me, telling me that, Hey, you know, we have ghosts in the house because, um, the lights would just turn on by themselves. They would turn off by themselves. Uh, they would just take a long time to activate in some cases, or sometimes they'll just activate and then act, turn right back off. Just really weird, inconsistent results. And one of the things I've noticed is that, like you saw inside this video, um, the sensors are delayed. I don't think it's Akara's fault. All of my Akara sensors are bridged into Home Assistant. I don't think it should make it big of a big deal, but both systems are kind of looking at it. And I think that may be causing some conflict. So in one system, it may be more responsive while in the other, it may not be and then vice versa. I've been seeing some weird inconsistencies on both sides. So I'm curious to see if that's the cause of what I'm noticing. And it's also probably why I think my sensors are just going unknown or just unresponsive for short bursts of time uh i'll probably sort that out the next video but um i'm not going to count it against the device i think this is just more so of just my weird setup that i have going on in the next video i'm probably going to explore the device within home assistant and seeing if i can get the whole wasp in a box to work in that platform i've tried before and it doesn't really work out that well like it kind of works but i'm getting the same sp spotty results i am gonna give it another good old college try and see if i can get that to work in the meantime if you guys want to try out the akara p2 and uh, test it out for yourself check the link in the description uh akara sent me a link that will let you guys get it at a discount um so get at it as quick as you can i don't know how long that link's gonna last and the link also is an affiliate link so i do get a small kickback if you do decide to use the link and it's at no additional cost to you guys it does help the channel and i do appreciate your support if you would like to become a channel member feel free to do so and if you don't want to that's cool uh I would just ask that you just like the video if you thought it was helpful or entertaining and feel free to subscribe your choice <laughs>
if you haven't seen some of my other videos about the car's products, uh, like the ones that I use to do my smart washing machine or to do my smart laundry or the ones that I did around the FP2, feel free to check those out. Those are really fun. And I think you guys may enjoy that. All right. Later.